Hello, welcome to our yin and restorative yoga practice. My name is Michelle Chua and for this practice, you'll wanna have quite a few props. If you have anything like what I have here, such as two blocks, a strap, a blanket and a bolster. And since we're gonna be focusing quite a bit on externally rotating or turning out the thighs at the hips, let's start in some gentle version of that like some kind of cross-seated, uh, cross-legged or easy pose called Sukhasana. And uh, you might even find it helpful to sit up on any of your props. Elevating the pelvis can help to relax the hips to open up and the spine to lengthen. And so I'd like to continue our exploration of the theme harmony, which was uh, manifested in our forest bathing excursion recently as we were looking around at how nature teaches so much about harmony. And as we enter, we, can, we enter the fall season. We're in the first few days here in the Northern Hemisphere. And so my question for you, um, especially during our practice today as self inquiry would be, in what ways do you cultivate harmony within yourself? And in effect, ripple out harmony in the world that is around you. So how does your practice of yoga help you to bring together? I was looking up different definitions of harmony and seeing the pattern uh, besides harmony in the context of music, which is very similar um, to this harmony I'm talking about. Uh, the pattern of the definitions was that harmony means the coming together of different parts to create a pleasing whole. So this idea of wholeness that allows the wide range of differences. In our meditation practice, we hold space for what may arise from the uncomfortable feelings and thoughts to the very pleasurable feelings. And we practice not judging them, right? We do that also when we're checking in at the beginning. So in this sense, how can we bring that attitude throughout our physical yoga practice? All right, let's take a moment to check in, starting with the physical body observing the sensations that are communicating to you right now in different parts of your body. Noticing where you feel tension, where you feel very relaxed, the wide range of sensations. And then feeling the qualities of the breath just as it is, texture, depth, pace. Through the breath, observing your energy. And then noticing the state of your mind and any emotions you're experiencing. As we cultivate non-judging in our observations, bring that ability to hold space for all the different parts that create the whole of this present moment and the whole of us. Feel the surface that's physically holding your body with support and allow the breath in a little deeper. Exhaling through your mouth, each new breath slightly deeper, cultivating a curiosity about where you can feel the breath move and maybe where you can invite it to expand a little more. few more times, exhaling through the mouth. A 
Let's begin our practice of gratitude, acknowledging someone or something that you appreciate right now. Begin to clarify your intention for this practice. And then thinking of those around you, I invite you to choose someone or a group of someones that you might offer up your practice to today as a way of letting the efforts you put into this practice support the well-being of others. And together, let's join our voices in support of each other chanting the sound of interconnection om three times let in a deep breath Continue to invite a feeling of harmony through the breath by practicing ujjayi pranayama or victorious breathing in which we're cultivating balance of energy, calm, and focus by lengthening the inhalations as slowly as the exhalations while creating a gentle whispering sound by breathing just through the nose and softly narrowing the back of the throat. As you listen to your breathing, invite a smooth, calm, steady quality. And see if you can keep that gently audible whispering sound in the breath going through much of our physical yoga, our asanas. We'll start to move to that breath. Come on down to your back. We'll begin with some gentle movements, warming up the hips and set a strap off to the side near the rear of your mat. And as you lie on your back, bend your knees towards your chest, take hold of your knees, and to your pace of breath, begin to circle your legs in different directions, breathing in, breathing out, exploring different ways of rotating your thigh bones at your hip sockets and feeling into the sensations, especially around your hips. as well as your inner thighs and outer thighs. Switching up the movements on your own. Then slide your left leg flat on the ground and hug your right thigh or shin with two hands. Let in a deep breath and press the instep of your left foot forward. As you exhale, rounding your back, hug your right leg a little closer by lifting the head and shoulders. 
Then inhale, release the right leg flat to the ground, relax the head and shoulders, and exhale, hug the left thigh or shin, lifting the head and shoulders. Let's continue with this gentle movement. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug the right leg. Inhale, release. Exhale, the left leg. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug right. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug left. Last round, inhale, release. Exhale, hug right. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug left. And then from here, step your feet on the ground, bending your knees, and separate your feet a little wider apart than your hips distance. Let's continue to warm up the inner and outer thighs, releasing the arms out to your sides. Inhale, keep your feet where they are and drop your knees both to your right side. Slowly exhale, drop your knees both to the left. Inhale, right. Exhale, left. Keep going several more cycles of breath at your own pace. Take your time. Last cycle of breath in this movement. And then draw your bent knees towards your outer armpits, coming into happy baby But As you thread your arms between your thighs, I invite you to clasp your big toes. If that's hard to reach without, uh, without uh, being able to relax the shoulders down, then take hold of your ankles or your shins, whatever you can reach. And then as you draw your thighs towards you, ground your tailbone, ground your shoulders, relax your head. Inhale, straighten your right leg to whatever capacity that you're not straining yourself, like a gentle towards straight. And then exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, bend. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, bend. Couple more cycles of breath on your own. All right, straighten the legs flat on the floor. One more movement before we hold a yin posture. Inhale, point the toes, raise the arms overhead, get long up and down your body. And then exhale, contract the belly and hug both knees into your chest, rounding into a compact ball. Inhale, stretch long. Exhale, contract. Inhale, stretch long. Exhale, contract. Three more breaths, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now keep hugging your right leg, relax the head and shoulders, and straighten your left leg on the floor. Now let's flex both of your feet as we set up for supine hand to big toe pose where you might use your strap. Place your left hand on the very top of your left thigh, pressing down so that the back of your left hip stays grounded. Bring your right arm on the inner side of your right thigh to hold your big toe with your peace fingers or to place a strap around the ball of your right foot and hold the strap instead. Making sure that your shoulders can stay on the ground as you straighten your right leg 
towards the sky, giving yourself enough slack in the strap so your shoulders are still grounded. So as you're flexing both feet, press the insteps of your feet forward. And now from your right hip socket, externally rotate your right thigh bone. So before you open a door, you gotta turn the doorknob. Think of it as that. And as you exhale, start to abduct the right leg, which means move it away from the center line of your body. Take your time. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. As you're turning out the right leg, notice if the right side of your torso is shortening, which is natural that the right hip may hike up towards the armpit, but can you draw your right outer hip forward towards your inner left heel so as to lengthen the right side of your torso evenly with the left? In the practice of integrating harmony or being more focused on how we are cultivating harmony within our minds, our bodies, our breaths. Notice how you are holding yourself in this posture. Is there a balance, right? In every posture, we're balancing effort, especially in the more active postures, steadiness, and effort with a letting go, an easefulness. So notice how the two dance in harmony within this pose. Last two deep breaths in Supta or Supine Uttita Hasta Parangushtasana hand to big toe pose. Lifting your right leg up, bend the right knee, remove the strap if you have it, and let's take a moment in a spinal twist. So slide your hips towards the right edge of your mat and open your right arm wide out to the right, ground the shoulder. You might stretch your neck by facing your right shoulder. And with your right knee bent, begin to cross the right thigh over your body to the left, breath by breath only as far as the right shoulder can stay grounded. If your lower back is asking for a deeper stretch, place your left hand on your right outer hip. And as you breathe out, press your right outer hip forward, tilting it gently towards your inner left foot.
One more deep breath. And gently roll onto your back. Resting a moment in corpse pose. Allow a few breaths to observe how your body feels here, especially the right hip and right leg, the left hip, the left leg. Observing your breathing as well. Slowly bend your left knee, catching hold of your thigh or shin. And let's take our time transitioning. Place your right palm onto the very top of your right thigh, pressing down to ground the back of your right hip. Flex both of your feet. Bring your left arm on the inner side of your left thigh, either to hold a strap around the ball of your left foot or to hold the big toe with your left piece fingers. Straighten your left leg towards the sky to your degree. And from the left hip socket, begin to externally rotate your left thigh bone so that your left knee and toes start to spin to face the left wall. Slowly, we've got two minutes to explore, begin to abduct or open the left leg away from the midline of your body. Continue to relax your head and shoulders on the ground, or if needed, you can place a prop underneath your head. Breath by breath, exploring the range of motion here. And if you notice that your left side of your torso is shortening because maybe the left hip is hiking up towards the left armpit, Draw your left outer hip towards your inner right heel and try to lengthen the left side of your torso to even out with the right. One more deep breath. Bringing your left leg up 
to center again. Remove the strap if you're using it. Bend your left knee again. And let's prepare for our supine spinal twist. Slide your pelvis towards the left edge of your mat and open your left arm wide. Grounding your left shoulder and maybe gazing past it to stretch your neck. Begin to cross your left thigh over your body slowly. Only as far as you can keep the left shoulder grounded. Again, we'll be here for two minutes exploring the range of your twist. And if your lower back is needing a deeper release, you could place your right hand on your left outer hip. And as you breathe out, press your left outer hip forward, tilting it towards your right foot. One more deep breath. And gently unravel onto your back, straighten the legs forward, center your spine on the mat, and pause in corpse pose for about five deep breaths, observing your body, your mind, your energy. Noticing any parts of you that are asking you to hold space for it in the practice of harmony. While some things like pleasure and joy can be very easy to hold space for, other things like tension or pain or discomfort, not so easy. How can you practice that non-judgment mindfulness to bring nurturing attention to what's here right now? And let your breathing be of support. Now I invite you to take a block and set your feet on the ground. Lifting your pelvis, slide the block wide across your sacrum so it's underneath the flat part of your lower back, stably and comfortably supporting your weight. From here, let's raise the legs up and from the hip sockets, turn out your thighs, choosing to either bring the soles of your feet together sort of like a butterfly shape, like a Baddha Konasana in the air, or straddle your legs straight apart, letting the weight of gravity help to open up the inner thighs. You 
could also rest your arms on your inner thighs to help. And be here for a couple of minutes. One more deep breath. Slide your hands to your outer thighs and gently bring your knees together, lifting the legs straight up while still resting on the block. Then here you might rest the palms on the creases of your hips at your lower belly. Just about five deep breaths. You can circle out your feet, point and flex your toes. Softly step your feet on the ground and slide the feet apart wider than hips distance, dropping your knees together to touch. A little bit of counter pose, bringing an internal rotation to the thighs. Here you might rest the arms overhead, maybe hold opposite elbows as you drop the arms behind you and soften the shoulders down your back. We'll be here for couple of minutes or so.
Halfway there, you might switch the cross of the arms. Let in a full breath and clear it out. Heel toe your feet about hips width apart, parallel, and remove the block from underneath your body, gently lowering your pelvis. Hug your knees towards your chest and rock a little gently side to side, maybe forward and back. Taking your time to eventually lift your torso upright to sit. So I'm going to invite you into frog pose since we've really been focusing on this turning out of the thighs. Let's set up with your mat folded in half and your blanket folded to the thickness of your folded mat. So they're equally thick. Islands on the ground. And then start by from your hips, making sure you're not twisting your knees. So flex your feet if you have, uh, if your knees are very sensitive or anything like that. You wanna splay the thighs open without twisting the knees. Make sure you're originating the movement from the hip sockets, not from the knees, so that one inner knee is stepping on the mat with your toes pointing in the same direction as the kneecap is and the other inner knee is stepping on the blanket again your toes and your kneecaps are pointing out in the same direction and your pelvis is neither in front or behind your knees your pelvis is in line with your knees and so the purpose of having two different islands for each for the two knees is to be able to splay the thighs apart as they naturally might splay within the span of three minutes of being in this posture so you want to have right angles at your knees and you could lower down to your forearms you could place blocks under your forehead whatever you might need here to be as relaxed as possible for these three minutes Continue observing what's coming up for you internally, whether they be thoughts, beliefs, emotions, feelings, sensations, and continue practicing holding non-judgmental space for all of it. Letting the breath invite a sense of harmony as you bring all these different parts of what's arising into a pleasing whole.
Let the peaceful sound of your breathing help to soothe your mind. One more deep breath. Now, be very gradual as you transition. Placing your hands on the ground, begin to slide your feet closer together. Bring the knees closer together until you're in a wide kneed version of child's pose, sinking your hips down to your heels as your feet come together to touch and resting your forehead down. Pause in child's pose for several deep breaths. Observing what you notice in your body, in your mind. Begin to crawl your hands towards you, slowly rolling your spine upright. Where you can stretch your legs straight in front of you as you sit. Now let's prepare for another counter pose, a seated spinal twist. Straightening your left leg forward, bend your right knee and step the right foot on the ground, either on in front of your right hip or crossed outside of your left knee in which you could also choose to bend the left knee. And see where your body wants you to set up where you can sit tall and relaxed. Place the right hand behind your pelvis, raise the left arm and press into the ground as you breathe in to stretch your spine up. Keep the shoulders relaxed, legs still, and exhale, twist to your right. 
lower your left arm to hold your right leg or to hook the elbow outside the thigh and keep rooting down and stretching the spine up as you breathe in. Keep the pelvis still as you allow the twist to deepen as you breathe out for about a minute or so here. One more deep breath and exhale to unwind. Let's switch the cross of the legs. So right leg straight, bend the left knee, step the left foot in front of the left hip or cross the foot outside of the right knee. Maybe also bend the right knee. If you can, set up the same way as you did on your first side. Balance it out. Place the left hand behind your pelvis, press down to your lower body as you lift up the spine, breathing in, and keep your lower body still as you exhale to turn your rib cage to the left. Lower your right arm to hold your left leg or hook the elbow outside of it. Continue to press down to stretch the spine as you breathe in and invite the twist to deepen as you breathe out for another minute. One more deep breath. And exhale to unwind, straighten both legs. And let's prepare for seated forward fold. Option to place a strap around the balls of your feet to help your shoulders have a little more space to relax down or to eventually clasp your big toes with your peace fingers. Separate your feet hips width apart, flex your feet and press the insteps of your feet forward. Pressing downward to your sitting bones, breathe in and stretch your spine up, drawing the shoulders down. Breathe out just a little bit, hinge forward from your hips. Press downward, stretch the spine as you breathe in, and explore folding deeper as you breathe out for another minute or so. Remember to keep your shoulders relaxed, only go as far as you can do that. Neck is long, front and back.
the pelvis down. Breathe in as you lead with your chest to slowly rise. Relax your feet, maybe shake out your legs, roll out your shoulders, your head if needed. And let's set up for one more pranayama practice to help us relax more deeply and tune inward, preparing for Shavasana and seated meditation. So find a way to sit in which you can sit tall and comfortably breathe, rooting the pelvis down and relaxing the entire body. Let's practice alternate nostril breathing and energy balancing breath, which is a great one as we're promoting harmony because it invites the harmony of the feminine and masculine energy that is flowing through all of our energy centers, the yin and the yang, the lunar and the solar. So Nodi Shodhana Pranayama, as it's called in Sanskrit, uh, resting your left hand on your lap, you might place the hand in Gyan Mudra to help you tune inward and focus. Thumb and index, fingers touching, palm face up. Right hand placed in Vishnu Mudra, in which you stick out the thumb, pinky, and ring fingers. As you breathe through your nose gently and sustained, we'll use the right thumb to close the right nostril like this and the right ring and pinky to close the left nostril like this, alternate nostril breathing. As you're practicing it, you might close your eyes and turn your inward gaze towards Ajna Chakra or your third eye center to help focus. Let's practice three cycles together and continue three cycles on your own before letting go of controlling the breath. Then notice anything you feel after. Prepare to start by breathing in fully through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Closing the mouth, close the right nostril with the right thumb. Inhale through left for six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the breath, two, one. Close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold two, one. Stay here, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold two. One, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold two, one, second cycle, inhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold two, one, close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold two, one, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, third cycle, inhale left, six, hold two, close left, Exhale right, six. Hold two. Inhale right, six. <coughs> Hold two. Close right, exhale left, six. Hold two. Third, keep going three more cycles on your own.
And when you have finished, relax into natural breathing. Observe anything you feel. And when you're ready, gradually lower your body to the ground, finding your final resting pose in which you can be still, relax completely for a few minutes of Shavasana.
you're resting a little longer with eyes closed, notice how your physical body feels. And taking your time, listen to how your body wants to begin waking up. Be gentle as you begin to move and stretch the body. Gradually turning over onto your right side and resting your head for a few moments. As you lie on your side, allow a few moments to observe your breathing. Notice your energy and how it's been affected by your practice. As you're ready, take your time lifting your body slowly up to sit. Find a way to sit comfortably, tall, relaxed, to begin our five minutes of meditation. If your mind feels like a monkey mind jumping from one thing to another, Give it an anchor to rest on. You might rest your awareness gently on the subtle movements of the breath flowing in and out. One of the ways that Thich Nhat Hanh mindfulness teacher defines meditation is looking deeply. So as you let your breath be an anchor to support your presence, as you begin to feel more and more present and the mind calms, observe what arises, thoughts, feelings, emotions, bringing a non-judgmental curiosity to looking at what arises deeply. Beyond the labels of good or bad or duality, practicing holding space for whatever is arising in the moment.
Notice how your mind feels now. Notice any emotions you're feeling. As you enter the rest of your day or week, in what ways can you cultivate a sense of harmony within yourself, even something small each day that can help to promote outer harmony with those you affect around you? As we bring our practice to a close, let's come back to the practice of gratitude, recognizing someone or something with appreciation. And remember your intention. Remember to whom you dedicated your practice. And together as we chant Om three times to close, and sense the vibration we've co-created through our practice together. And so you're singing it out into the world to share as well as integrating it within yourself. So let's prepare to chant three times. Deep breath in. Ah. bowing in towards your heart center, honoring your inner teacher, the light within. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.